Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial from PhotoshopIsFun.com. Now today's lesson is for photographers, photographers who own CS6 or the Creative Cloud version of Photoshop, because we're going to be diving into Camera Raw tool. And if you're not familiar with Camera Raw, it's a micro tool that's embedded within Photoshop that allows photographers to go through their typical workflow when processing images. So grab your favorite pictures, open up Photoshop, and let's get started. Okay, so let me grab a picture and drop it into Photoshop. And before I start talking about the interface, let me go ahead and talk about how to invoke the Camera Raw tool for those of you who are shooting in JPEG, which quite frankly most people are, and have a non-Creative Cloud version of Photoshop. So let's say um, uh, CS6, for example. If that's the case, what you'll need to do is go into Photoshop's Camera Raw tool preference settings and you need to tell Photoshop to open up your JPEGs into the Camera Raw tool before importing into Photoshop and that will allow you to take advantage of these sliders in the workflow. If you're not familiar with how to set that up, I do have a tutorial on it so feel free to back out, go into my video section and find it, watch it, it's really quick and get that set up properly and then come on back and we'll get started again. If you are using a um, Creative Cloud version of Photoshop then you don't have to do any of that. It's already um, built into the filter menu and you can just take advantage of it there. Okay, so with that let's go ahead and get started with the interface. Okay, so when you open up Camera Raw, this should be the interface that you see. Over here on the right hand side are all the typical tools you as a photographer would use to process your images. At the top we have a histogram and if you're not familiar with how to read a histogram and use it to your advantage when processing your photos, I'm going to do a tutorial on that in the near future so I'll give you some more tips and insights about how to do that. Um, in this tutorial I will touch a little bit on the histogram so I'll show you a couple of tips but um, we'll go more in depth at a later date. And then below that you have a bunch of sliders and these are again all those typical things you would do when processing your photos like white balance sliders and um, you know contrast highlights all those types of things so let's go ahead and start playing around with the sliders and um, let me show you how they work so let's go ahead and start with our white balance and temperature settings. So if you go up here, um, you'll see that under white balance there's a drop down menu and it has a bunch of options that are probably very similar to what you have on your camera. So if you're shooting on a cloudy day or under fluorescent lighting, you would, you would um, select one of those. You can also do auto and what auto will do is it'll tell camera raw, look at all of my image data and try and figure out the right white balance for this photo. And in this case, it didn't do a very good job. However, I will say that typically it nails it or gets it really close. Um, but in this case, it didn't. So what I would do here is I just manually adjust my temperature and tint until I got the right white balance that I was looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and um, warm this up a bit and then add a little bit of green back in. So once you have your white balance kind of figured out, then you move to the second step in your workflow, and that is this middle set of sliders, starting with exposure, ending with blacks. And you also have an auto adjustment for all of those. So if you were to click on that, what it'll do is something very similar to the white balance auto um, option, which is look at all of your image data and try and make the best um, you know, suggestions for each one of these sliders. So for example, if I click on auto, you can see that it made adjustments to those middle set of sliders and it overexposed so it didn't nail it but definitely try it with your photographs because sometimes it's right on the money or it gets you really close and you just have to make um, kind of micro adjustments um, in this case it, it again it overexposed so I'm gonna bring this down closer to probably half a stop yeah somewhere in there and um, and then you have your contrast slider which I think most of you are probably familiar with you have your highlights and shadows which is the gradient of lights and, and darks so you can um, for example shadows you can boost those a bit and bring some luminosity to them um, and you also have pure whites and pure black adjustments here too so same kind of thing you can um, darken your blacks further etc and that is the second step and middle set of sliders um, in camera raw and then lastly are these last set of three sliders down here at the bottom and we have clarity vibrance and saturation and I love clarity clarity is like contrast but it only works on midtones and not the entire image so for example if I were to crank clarity up you can start to see the brick and um, some of the wrinkles and different textures in her shirt start to really pop however 
As you can also see, one of the side effects of clarity, especially for women's skin tone. Now, women's skin tone, generally in photographs, you want it to be soft and more glowing and not harsh. Um, but you can see that clarity uh, doesn't really work for, for a female skin tone. However, for a male skin tone, you can make it work, or at least men who have like stubble or beards, you can really make those um, kind of come out in interesting ways, like a dragon effect um, when you use clarity in those areas. But again, you have to isolate it. Um, so think about how you want to use clarity for your photographs if you want to use it at all and then on the other end of clarity it starts to soften everything and uh, you can see the extreme on how that works so that's clarity so play around with it see how it works for you and then second is vibrance and vibrance is pretty cool it boosts um, saturation but only with like lower saturated colors it won't turn skin orange and oversaturate things like um, if you were to just use the saturation slider so for example with um, vibrance if I were to um, start to slide it to the right you can see that it's starting to boost um, the blues and the different colors in her clothing in a real nice way I'm going to go ahead and bring that back to zero. Um, and then saturation. Saturation is basically, um, you know, color intensity across all channels. So you can do some crazy things with saturation. Uh, a little bit of saturation generally looks pretty good. But then if you want to get, um, you know, kind of that circus look and uh, start to make oranges and things like that pop, then you just crank it all the way. So that's the basic sliders within Camera Raw, and that is the typical workflow for most photographers. If you're wanting to do more and do more advanced stuff within Camera Raw, then go to the next Camera Raw tutorial, and we'll go ahead and get into how to isolate some of these um, settings within our photograph.